Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Delver of Standard, the bi-weekly news show where we take a look at the competitive magic scene, take a look at results of tournaments that have come or gone, um, take a look forward to the meta of tomorrow, and generally dive into what's going on at the tabletop uh, to find out what is happening in Standard lately. Obviously, this is we're recording this one week before the next Pro Tour. Pro Tour March of the Machine is taking place in Minneapolis uh, on May 5th to the 7th. Um, the broadcast schedule is going to look something like this. So day one, uh, we'll start uh, at, what does it say here? 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so that'll be uh, 9 a.m. for us on the Pacific Coast. That'll be pretty good. And then day two, it will be will be the same time. Uh, and day three will start at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Uh, the Pro Tour is going to have a few different um, formats. So the... Let's look at the broadcast team here. Cast of characters that we're used to seeing. We love this team very much. Um, okay, so the tournament will play out in the following way. Day one will be uh, three rounds of draft, followed by four rounds of standard. And then in order to... In order to make day two... Or you might just make day two. So day two will be another three rounds of draft and then another four rounds of standard. And then day three will be the top eight. The prizes will um, kind of stretch out like this. First place will get 50,000. And this is USD. Second place will get 30,000. Three through four will get 15. And then to round out the top eight, Five through eight will get ten thousand, and then all the way uh, from two hundred forty fifth will cash. So it's if there's more than two hundred forty five players, everyone will cash. Um, if you're above two forty five, so even if you're one sixty one to two forty five, you'll still get a thousand dollars cash, which is a pretty good uh, turnout for you know placing that low it's these the prize pools are, are fairly large uh, for these events these days uh, total prize pool is roughly half a million dollars for the pro tour march of the machine the next pro tour after that will be barcelona and that will be pro tour lord of the rings which is one of the strangest sentences you could ever say as a magic player um We've got qualifier promo cards for the next series. We've got Unholy Heat for taking place and Eldritch Evolution for qualification. Um, and yeah, you can still qualify for the next Pro Tour after this one in Barcelona. Um, again, the broadcast schedule is starts on Friday the 5th, goes until Sunday the 7th. Very excited. As far as metagame breakdowns go, um, the uh, Frank Karsten posted a really great metagame breakdown, taking into account all of the um, recent tournaments and qualifiers. Two twenty seven hundred regional championship competitors in total, uh, and the metagame breaks down like this. Uh, obviously, first place we have a Grixis mid range for now. Uh, second is Esper Legends, Mono White Midrange, Rakdos Midrange, and Mono Red Aggro to round out the top five. Now, like we said last episode, Grixis Midrange is slowly being bumped down the ladder. And the DreamHack Regional, US Regional Championships, uh, had two decks. The top, the finals was two Rakdos uh, decks. So be sure to keep an eye on the Rakdos deck lists because that's going to be pretty popular after having two uh, different decks in the top two at regionals um, but 
looking ahead, obviously we have a new set that has just released, March of the Machine. This new championship, the Pro Tour 4 March of the Machine, is obviously going to include March of the Machine cards. So what is going to change? Because the last few tournaments we've seen uh, did not include any cards from this new set that has just come out. And Reed Duke, I will post a link in the ch um, video description below to Reed Duke's awesome article, uh, kind of explaining how he sees as a seasoned pro uh, March of the Machine changing up the metagame for standard com competition. We'll quickly go through some of these uh, just to kind of highlight some of the bigger cards that are shifting the metagame. Obviously, Demir is kind of coming up the ladder a little bit. Chrome Host Seed Shark is a pseudo shark typhoon um it doesn't do as much work as shark typhoon did but it's pretty darn good for a three drop that spits out phyrexian creature tokens um so demir is on the climb with sh the introduction of shark typhoon there's an interesting um boros mid-range deck obviously you get to play fable which is the most powerful red card in standard but also the new itali which is really scary um, Atraxa was really bad to play against. It was it made a huge impact um, on the standard format. Other formats too. People in all sorts of formats, from uh, modern to pioneer, were trying to figure out how to build the best shell around reanimating Atraxa. Um, and Itali is pretty close to Atraxa levels of big bombs. And so we've got a lot of decks that are shooing in Itali. Um, <clears throat> this this Boros deck is really interesting. We've got replayability. We've got blinking. So if you blink uh, a tally, you get the ETB triggers again. Uh, next on the list is Explosive Singularity. This is interesting because we've got um, a really expensive card that you want to filter to the top of your deck so that you can sack Hidetsugu and Kairi and deal 10 damage to your opponent um Hidetsugu and Kairi is a very interesting new card I don't think it's going to be hugely meta shifting but it is fun to build around and I think that you're gonna see a few decks that uh combo this card together because obviously we want to to do some cool stuff with new cards um hit the Hidetsugu builds are usually rather um you know two ships passing in the night kind of thing you're just doing your thing on your side but it's a fun deck to put together uh next up for toxic there's going to be a lot of splashing into orzov for the toxic decks because grafted butcher is a recurring phyrexian lord um you can continuously recur this from the graveyard and is pretty darn strong so all those toxic decks that have been kind of at the bottom end of the top 10 in the meta are going to now have this new lord as long as they splash black um so expect to see an orzov toxic shift in the meta uh jun midrange is is good it's just getting stronger uh there's nothing super new uh mono blue is still dropping down the charts it's not very strong anymore there's not enough control Obviously, it still centers around stuff like Haughty Jin and Telerian Terror and can succeed or with or without Delver of Secrets. Um, it's lots of card draw. Uh, and there's a couple of new counter spells in this format that uh, are pretty prominent. Um, nothing's really changed in the domain area. Obviously, we have access to the gain lands which don't actually have the land types on them so that was pretty much the only thing that could have shifted that domain game uh soldiers is pretty interesting because there's a lot of knight synergies uh in the new set so that's going to be interesting to keep an eye out uh mono red got a bunch of new tools in this last set stoke the flames a convoke card that does four damage to any target is really powerful um, it is a reprint of the new Bloodfeather Phoenix, which is a hasty reoccur. 
card from the graveyard and then rampaging raptor which um you know is a has fire breathing and haste and trample and it can deal damage to other targets if it deals damage to an opponent so mono red is getting some more tools the newest one that's really cool is the Jes jeskai control thanks to the chrome ho seed shark and sergo and ojatai um, Jeskai Control has got a few more tools now with March of the Machine out, so expect to see um, Jeskai Control kind of jump up the standard ladder a little bit. Uh, the next deck that Reed talks about is Reanimator, which is kind of an all forms Reanimator. Uh, you've got stuff like Atraxa, you've got stuff like the new Ert or Atali in. In this deck it's just try to get these broken cards into your graveyard so that you can play them back out for cheaper um yeah it's a pretty good pretty good deck uh mono white got a little bit better with stuff like elish norn uh elspeth is a really great um legendary planeswalker for the mono white mid-range decks esper legends got one really good new tool which is a um, card cycler that untaps when you play legendary cards so esper legends has a new powerful two drop that also does some really nasty things on the backside. so keep an eye out for the new rona herald of invasion card to make a splash in the esper legends lists uh grixis midrange is continues to add the white or sorry the red tools as they come out but i think it's still going to be a little bit lower than we expect and then the last one is Rakdos midrange Reed puts it at number one here on the meta chart and I think that that is spot on I think there's plenty of new black red tools in March of the Machine and with the already powerful Rakdos midrange builds that we've seen in previous tournaments these last few months uh, Rakdos midrange is only getting stronger uh, so definitely expect to see more of these kind of decks the new Chandra Planeswalker card is really good. Doubles up your instants and sorceries, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of a look at how some of the new cards are affecting these decks that are currently circulating, circulating on the competitive circuit. Um, taking a quick look at the Goldfish top decks in the last seven days, we see a lot of the same Esper Legends, Grixis Mid, Rakdos Mid, Mono White, Mono Red Aggro. It is nice to see stuff like the Jeskai, oh, it's below my head, the Jeskai Control come up the ladder. Um, Abzan Legends is a little tweak on the Esper Legends, which is starting to gain a little bit of popularity. Um, and obviously the Rakdos uh, Reanimator cards uh, are getting more powerful with the Itali Resurrected. Um, stuff that has fallen off continues to be like the Mono Blue Tempo. Azorius Soldiers has dropped a little bit because all of the Soldier synergies kind of fell off. Um, March of the Machine has a lot of really cool low power white blue, but they're all Knights and not Soldiers. So that's a little bit of a tricky situation. You'll see that the Azoria Soldier stuff drops a little bit. And we'll finish off the show with a look at the movers and shakers. Thanks to MTG Goldfish. Uh, the weekly biggest movers and shakers in standard are... Uh, let's start with the losers. Uh, Urbrasks drops down 27%, which is good because I want to buy some of these for my Spellslinger decks. Um, Invasion of Ikoria has dropped down almost 20%. Shieldred is actually dropping for the first time ever because there's a new version of Shieldred that is almost as good. It's not as good. It's almost as good. Uh, Ren and Realmbreaker is dropping. There was a lot of preset release speculation on how good this card would be. And it really hasn't found a good home. Um, the lands deck is not as strong as some people might hope, so... I think Ren and Realm Breaker was pre-speculated to be pretty powerful, and it's kind of dropping down the ladder as we go. Uh, Sword of Once and Future, obviously this is a big commander card, but it's not really going to find a home in a lot of standard decks. 
Foreign Clex is dropping a bit. Again, pretty speculation that the green Praetor was going to be really strong, and it is. Uh, but the green Stompy deck isn't going to pick up much steam in the standard meta currently, so we'll have to wait and see if that continues on a downward. Uh, City on Fire, again, pre-speculation, had this card really powerful, and it's just not finding a home anywhere. Jinkataxis, very much the same thing. Blue and green are dropping in stock rather than rising in stock. Um, Adeline Resplendent Cathar dropped uh, just a tiny bit, but I think that that's kind of just because it's bouncing back from rising so high. And then Drana and Linvala, I think this is going to be an interesting addition to cards that can play or decks that can play Orzhov cards, but it's not as powerful as the pre-speculated power uh, saw. Our biggest winners are C-Double. Again, this was undervalued coming into the set and has proven to be very formidable and a great addition, especially sideboard-wise, into decks that can play blue. Uh, the Grixis midrange deck should be sideboarding this card in or putting it in the main deck because you get to copy your opponent's best stuff. Um, Fairy Mastermind, the Yuta Takahashi World Championship card, uh, has proven to be as good as people speculated it to be, so it has risen in popularity. The new Shieldred has, keeps going up because people are finding new ways to abuse its power. Portal to Phyrexia is going up because of artifact synergies. Fable the Mirror Breaker always is going to go up because people play it in every red deck. Uh, Invasion of Chandelar is one of the better battles coming out of the set. Halo Fountain is rising because of artifact synergies and 1-1 one, one green and white tokens decks. Uh, Zopandrol is, interesting, is an interesting rise, but I think this is more for... Um, the reanimator the random reanimator decks but also commander stuff uh, all will be one is a very powerful enchantment that people are starting to slot into some more situations in the meta so i think all will be one will continue to rise and then mondrak glory dominus this was a pretty undervalued card going into phyrexia all will be one that has seen a lot of play in the mono white decks and the token decks so mondrak's going to continue to rise i think until something comes back uh through and sweeps out that mono white kind of make soldier tokens deck and and that's it for this week's episode of delver of standard very excited for the pro tour this weekend Thank you so much for watching these. I would love it if you could subscribe to the channel on YouTube. We're trying to get those subscription numbers up. Um, reach out to me on Twitter. I'm at Wyatt Fawcett on Twitter. And let's talk about magic anytime. I hope all of your hands are keeps. And I hope all of your opponents mulligan. I will see you on the next one. Peace out.